Hello, we hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another CSGO News episode. I hope you guys all enjoy. As always, all of today's stories will be timestamped down below. And one last reminder for all of you guys out there who have teams or friends who want to play together for CSGO or also maybe Dota 2 or if you want to go solo for Hearthstone or StarCraft or other esports, we actually have WESG qualifiers. You guys can sign up for free up to $200,000 in prizes. My link will be down below if you and your friends want to sign up, guys. That will be the last reminder for this uh, sponsorship. Hope you guys all enjoy, though. And as always, let's get into it. And first off in CSK News, of course you guys are very well aware we are still awaiting stickers. I know there's been several comments about Jake, why do you freak out about stickers? If you've been a long time viewer, you know exactly why. The last three or four majors have actually invested heavily into them, and I'm all about stickers. I think they're a great part of the community, especially because these capsules eventually go on sale for 25 cents a piece, and they're always such an integral part of the major. You know, the major, of course the organizer and the actual event itself, production quality matters a lot, but for me personally, when, from an outside perspective, when it comes to CSGO, and uh, loving just collecting things, stickers have always been a big part of the game and so that's why I've been talking about stickers a lot and as always guys the timestamps are always down below so you can, you can always skip past the sticker segments but again uh, of course we still have no stickers yet hopefully maybe this weekend or maybe of course uh, the most likely and latest possible is probably next week if it goes any further past that then something is definitely up we're gonna get keychains or something crappy instead but on top of that I do want to show you guys if you've not seen this actually a really cool uh, designer out there designed CSGO caricatures <laughs> <laughs> Caricature, I can't get the word right, but you guys know what I mean. It's the first time we've ever seen these designs. He actually, in the same tweet, did say it's not going to be happening, but he was actually approached by a Valve to do these, and I responded to it. I know a bunch of other people saw this and responded to it, and I'm really curious what you guys think about this, because it's definitely going to be. The fact that Valve approached them for this and then denied it for this major pre pretty much preludes to, in some time in the future, sometime whether it's a, a two years from now or a year from now or next major, it's definitely going to happen. It's just a big question as to when, and I think it's so dope. Just the idea of collecting all these stickers. Now, I do want to say I'm not really sure how they look with foils and hollows. It would be a bit weird. It, it might be, of course, not the best uh, aesthetically pleasing sticker out there, but just the fact you can go out there and try and open or buy and collect all of your favorite announcers, your commentators, your analysts, your players, and how they actually look is, is a really cool concept. So, although I don't approve of the keychains and maybe even team gloves at, at some point, I do think those things are probably going to come eventually in the game. And the big question is when are they going to come into the game? But that was one of the coolest things I've ever seen. CS go caricature the word is stupid, but still, a really cool concept, guys. Hopefully coming in the future for CSGO. And also in CSGO news revolving around map pool, we talked about this in the past very briefly about the never really changing CSGO map pool. It's been the same set maps pretty much since the start of CSGO, and on top of that, the real only big changes out there have been the Dust 2 rework and occasional changes for a very, very small and minor changes for maps out there, and occasionally when a major comes around, they take one map out, they put another map in. This time around, of course, for the face of major, it's going to be Cobblestone out, which might hurt viewership numbers. We'll wait on that, and of course, Dust 2 back in. So a big change for some teams out there, but overall the maps stay the same. And so I'm hoping for maybe some additional maps in the map pool in the future. Maybe extend that map pool by one or two maps is what I'm hoping for, but we'll see if that actually happens. We actually have FM Pone who took to stream and actually leaked some possible cash reworks. Now I'm actually going to show you guys a video very shortly right here. We got to go back in. We're going back in. Oh shit. And as well as we can try our best, I'll show it to you guys full screen. It's been kind of blurry. There's really no great screenshot of it. But the best way to actually look at this, and of course, he's been hinting at cash reworks for a long, long time now. It's expected sometime in 2019 we will see these reworks, and it looks pretty awesome. Not going to lie, if you guys got the same kind of overgrown vibe from like Call of Duty with the moss kind of growing on the walls, everything kind of looks, if you could compare it to another CSGO map out there, I agree with some comments. It looks like Aztec. Honestly, Aztec's a map I used to stream a lot on this channel as well. It looks like the kind of the moss and the grass growing out of nowhere the the it looks almost as if the map is deteriorating or kind of being taken over by the world or by nature itself and it looks very cool and on top of that some very last news for map pools we actually have new compatibility versions for both train and mirage and i think they're only minor bug fixes but whenever they update these compatibility versions it does mean changes are coming to those maps as of right now for train and mirage i think it's minor changes but for cash 2019 we should see some big graphical changes uh thanks to fm pone leaking that on on stream or did he do it on purpose? And in our most recent ESCA drama out there, I do want to clarify, before we get into the story, I know there are plenty of reasons to hate ESCA. They've done a lot of sketchy things in the past that people continue to hate on them for. I do want to say between Faceit, ESCA, from what I've heard from opinions, Faceit is obviously probably the better client, but ESCA definitely has its advantages and definitely offers some things for up-and-coming pros that I really do enjoy watching myself. First of all, they offer ESCA Main, ESCA Advance, and most importantly, ESCA Mountain Dew League. I think Mountain Dew League rebranded to ESCA Mountain Dew League 2 or 3 
three seasons ago. It's a great way for up-and-coming teams to actually compete for higher things like ESL Pro League spots. Now, although our last season did not go for a Pro League spot, this next season starting very soon here does go for a Pro League spot. So I think ESCA does some great things uh, that, and, and that actually have done some sketchy things in the past, but it continue to do some great things hopefully in the future. Although, of course, they keep on having these random occurrences. Of course, the bit mining accident or the accident they had alongside. If you guys remember the scam story I covered about them doing a referral system and some guy actually earned like $35,000. His name is Mario. He's a friend of mine on Twitter. He earned $35,000 via ESCA's referral system and they just didn't pay him for it. So there's a lot of sketchy things in their past. And alongside that, we actually had this story released today all around Team One, a Brazilian team up and coming, doing very well in ESCA Advanced. Now, why I want to clarify ESCA Advanced because it's actually a, the, for a relegation tournament held by ESCA. They are taking the bottom seven Mountain Dew League teams pretty much by this point and actually uh, clarified in the post. So I'll link down below for all of you. These bottom seven teams, which you can imagine in Mountain Dew League, are a lot of teams that are breaking up. Players are leaving. Players are coming and going. There's really no organizational support for them. Usually the bottom seven of your Mountain Dew League teams are very, very bad. Now, not to say that your top nine of, Mount, of ESCA Advanced are any better, but they take the top, the bottom seven of ESCA Mountain Dew League teams competing and the top nine in ESCA Advanced, and they clash them together for 16 teams, and the top four teams will actually earn spots back into Mountain Dew League. Now, this is a very big thing for many teams out there, because like I said previously, Mountain Dew League is a great way to actually earn an ESL Pro League spot, especially for a team like Team One, a Brazilian team who's looking very good and dominant in ESCA uh, Advanced, who has a chance at definitely earning or potentially earning a future Pro League spot, at least somewhere down the line. Now, the big problem here with this post is apparently ESCA, during this relegation tournament, they are having the number one and the number two teams out of Advanced compete with each other in the very first round, which does mean in a single elimination tournament, one of them will be out. Now, the big controversy as well, of course, we have a lot of backlash because of what ESCA has done in the past. I think it's a pretty simple fix going forward past this relegation tournament. I know a lot of ESCA mods have already replied to that post. Just change the tournament format. There is no way when you take the bottom seven Mountain Dew League teams and the top nine ESCA Advanced teams that the num number one and number two seeds out of Advanced play each other in round one. There is no tournament format that should ever exist where that does happen because both those teams who finish number one and number two in advance do not deserve to be eliminated in round one with a chance of four teams to actually go through. It just They should be in opposite sides of the bracket. I don't think the bottom seven of Mountain Dew League should take all of your top seeds. That just shouldn't be how it is. So hopefully ESCA does fix this. I understand it's a pretty big issue, but again, it's probably a simple fix going forward. I do realize it definitely heavily affects these teams, but it, again, it's been in the rule book. There's another argument for this. It's always been in the rule book that how this tournament does play out. Just change the rules for next time and I won't have a problem with it. I do feel bad for Team 1 as well as the team they're playing against, Big Frames, because both those teams looked pretty solid throughout ESCA Advanced and unfortunately one of them will not earn their spot in Mountain Dew League most likely. And very lastly in CSGO news guys, we have a lot of random news out there. I do want to warn you, we have officially entered the dead period of CSGO. I tweeted this out last night. Unfortunately enough guys, there's going to be a lot less news videos until after the major when roster changes happen and when other teams are formed. Although as of right now, there's a lot of rumors about when the new French team is going to form. Apparently, it's going to be the last day of August, August 31st. We should see Team Vitality apparently sign that new French roster, which is very exciting. On top of that, there's some other news. We actually had a video from Taz, which for a second I got very confused because I realized that Taz is still on Kinguin. He's actually showing us the Zotac Cup. Uh, apparently, the conditions over there are not are not very, very good for the team. It kind of brings flashbacks to WESG, so thanks to Taz for showing us conditions over there for Zotac Cup. Now, I'm not really sure I couldn't translate. Maybe one of you guys could. I wasn't sure if he was making fun of it or, or you know, giving it props, but it did seem he was not very happy with his Zotac Cup conditions. And speaking of, of Taz and maybe his former teammates, we do apparently have Virtus Pro. Now, if you guys have been watching the Dota 2 International, it was Virtus Pro over there actually showing off their new jerseys. Although the sponsorship agreement, if you guys remember when they first announced their newest sponsor, why they changed their colors from, of course, the, the OG um, uh, white, uh, black, and orange stuff to the, you know, the, to the Joker colors, the weird ones, apparently it was not going to start until 2019. Although we actually have confirmed Pasha, the man looking better than ever. Yes, Virtus Pro is now confirmed. They actually have already started wearing their brand new jerseys. Now, also for you guys, I kind of wanted to mention some, some funny Twitter news as well. We actually had, thanks to Brian, I'll, I'll link his Twitter down below, kind of a funny CSGO account. He actually made sure to note this player on screen who is apparently 20 years old. And I had, I had no idea that he was going to respond to me in this post. And I'm going to guess his name is pronounced Ponk, but he actually reached out to me on Twitter. Uh, he responded to the Twitter post itself when I said he looked like a 14-year-old Freakazoid. And tell me I'm wrong. Look at that face. How crazy is that? Like, look at Freakazoid and look at Ponk 
who is apparently actually 20 years old. He does confirm that, but he has a baby face like me. So I'm so sorry if you're watching this video, Ponk. M make sure to correct me if I'm pronouncing your name incorrectly, but that was just a, in weird news. But also on top of that, guys, Entz also announced their newest coach addition to the team, which I thought is ob obviously I talked about Heroic when they announced their newest coach, Nasu, as well. I think any coach pickup is going to be generally beneficial for a team. So that was cool to see Entz sign them. And now, very lastly, again, I'm probably not going to see you guys for a couple days, so I got to get every single piece of news out there if possible. We actually have Nell reporting apparently Navi having issues with Flamey. Now I'm not going to, I'm not really sure if it's personal issues or maybe health issues. Apparently he will not be playing with the team at DreamHack Stockholm. So we'll bounce off for that. Hopefully uh, it's going to be okay for Flamey. Hopefully he's okay health wise for the major. And on top of that as well, we have final announcements. Navi will not be attending Star Series Season 6 after the major does conclude. Now, a lot of rumors out there do say just to not have the team burn out. I think it's very smart. No matter how well they do at the major, they're going to take off at least probably it sounds like a solid month because it goes the major and then it goes pretty much right to that tournament over there at Star Series Season 6. Now, it's actually pretty substantial as well and news-wise because this is the first time they're not going to be going to the event since 2012. And of course, most notably, uh, back in I believe it was June, earlier this summer, they won the event Star Series Season 5. So, very big news there, guys. Navi is taking to heart the fact that they don't want their players to burn out and they will not be in attendance and that also could be maybe maybe a roster change again they are still one of our top teams if they're not, not the number two team in the world so I'm not expecting too much there but apparently Flamey's having issues and they will not be going to an event right after the major due to actually rest issues so congrats Navi taking the first steps I hope other teams out there do the same all right that's all I got for you guys um don't know why you're still watching so see you later why are you still here?